Hi, I'm Christy Strau. I am the author of these two books that I'm very proud of. And the Possibility to Profit Coach. And I am getting to interview Anita Alexandra today. Anita is, is a fine artist, also a 25 year practitioner of Chinese medicine and a, which I'm gonna ask you about in a second, a consultant in five element art and design. And before I start that, I wanna hold up the two websites that people can find your art and find you and your artist statement. And we see some of your gorgeous art right behind you, which is very cool. So I wanted to ask you, Anita, what is a five element art and design consultant? Well, as a Chinese medicine practitioner, I work within the five element theory of the medicine, which states that the five elements of wood, fire, earth, metal, and water make up all the substances of the universe. And that as those occur outside in the world, they also occur in the environment of your health. And there's a whole system that uses those elements in relationship to each other to understand a person's health profile, mm -hmm. their emotional makeup, their personality. I've taken it into the art zone to express those qualities through different paintings. And as a feng shui designer, and consultant, I work with the personality and I try to match up the room or the space or the person's intention with the element that they need. So are you painting, are the paintings in response to what people need and like a specific person would need in their home? In part, the whole, I wasn't an artist before I went to Chinese medicine school. And by following this serious academic pathway that led me to having to participate in Western medicine, which was not my intention, but a necessity. Now I'm really involved in both aspects and trying to get back to the soul of the medicine that I went to school to practice. Mm. And through that, I was led to art because the five elements are so creative and they're not. They have characteristics and traits that go with them, but the way they interact is in a relationship form. So I don't know. I just woke up one day and thought, I really love color. I really love texture. I want to see, I wonder if I could do art. And I just started on that path. And then all the other stuff came later. The five elements, I'm fascinated with this model. There's lots of models to look at life. I love the personality system. I've kind of tweaked it for myself mm -hmm. and I use it with clients and with patients when required and also have an assessment on my website where you can take the personality test or quiz or questionnaire, whatever you want to call it, and it's free. So just go to anitaalexander.com to find that. And you can find out about yourself. You you need to know who you are, whether you want to become an artist or to do anything in your life. I think you need a starting point. Yeah. So it's such an interesting meld of art and medicine and healing. How are they related to each other? Well, they are because of this concept of five elements and how we are all made up of these five elements, whether mm -hmm. they're symbolic or representational or not. So let's say in a health environment, if I'm working with a patient, I have criteria that I'm looking at that tell me, oh, this person has too much water in their system. Mm -hmm. And what is the balance for that particular person in treatment? And then there are points and herbs and other modalities that help to support that. Other people will you know, have too much fire. So you've got to clear that heat. And you do that in different ways. Um, that goes over into the personality piece, which isn't necessarily a one-on-one -on -one relationship with the health. Your personality is a lot more slippery, I think, and um, more subjective than looking at a health profile. So if someone comes to me and they want to work on something, for example, let's say an artist who's struggling, mm -hmm. I'm going to do that assessment to figure out what their primary personality is which 
doesn't really change during the course of a lifetime, <laughs> but it's a place to start mm -hmm. and it's malleable depending on how you can work with the other parts of that. It's dynamic. And we pull on different characteristics over the course of a lifetime, depending on our circumstances and what we're trying to achieve or heal from or whatever that is. So to know where you're starting helps me to guide that person into what they need. And if you can't find it in yourself, then it's ironically, we do look outside of ourselves and bring people into our lives that, that feel that for us. For a long time, I had only fire friends. I'm a water person uh -huh. with a lot of metal. That's my personality. But I have changed a lot, especially since going on this journey, the art journey. Mm -hmm. And I've pulled in a lot more fire into my life because of it. Um, so you need to find that either in yourself or someone else so you can get where you want to go and be how you want to be. So what role does your art, what role would your art play in somebody's life then? Well, you know, do what you're compelled toward. If mm -hmm. you're someone who is drawn to art, then you're going to be drawn to art that assists you in some way. Yeah. And it's not necessarily just because it's peaceful or beautiful, which mm -hmm. are two qualities it could have. But a lot of times, let's say I'm working in a particular room in a person's house, or I'm trying to bring some energy into their business life, you're going to want something more stimulating. Some, or you're not really very good mechanically or technically, and yet you have computer work in a business always, and you want to bring that energy in. And that turns it into kind of a meditation or an intention mm -hmm. in the space mm -hmm. to bring that in and to bring the education with it so the person can connect to what it's doing for them. Who do you like to work with the most client-wise? Oh, can you be more specific? I'm not sure what you're asking. Well, I guess I'm asking like, who comes to you? I'm thinking that maybe two different kinds of people come to you. People come to you with medical issues or health issues, and then they might also come to you with feng shui questions yeah. or issues. People come to me for a lot of different reasons. And I think I have, because I have this water metal juxtaposition in my own personality, I can be very intellectual and academic and medically minded mm -hmm. and effect. And I also, then I have this creative thing <laughs> going on that also allows me to be more free flowing, spirited, think out of the box. So any people come to me because they don't feel good. You know, they mm -hmm. come because they're ill or they're struggling on the physical level. And sometimes that's all they want. Mm -hmm. Other clients come to me outside of the patient realm and they're struggling with some issue in their life. They don't like how they feel. They had an issue in their past that they haven't worked through yet. And um, it's really fascinating how our, I think our personality and circumstances make up most of our potential. So I look at that personality wedged against that circumstance and try to find solutions. It's really all about solutions. And then there's people who just want color in their home. So mm -hmm. they want, because they like me and they like my work and let's just do that. <laughs> or they want to be more intentional, like I yeah. described before. Yeah. Yeah. It's, uh, I was going to say per personality that brings all the potential into our lives and also all the problems. <laughs> <laughs> well, like it, it gets more complicated. It's kind of a hierarchy, isn't it? <laughs> yes. So one of the things I did in this book was um, work with archetypes. And I know that you do that also. And what I mean by archetypes, if people watching this don't understand what that means, is yeah, actually, how would you define that? Universal energies, I guess, that that appear all over the place, like the inner critic the fear of visibility, the queen, the jester, the innocent. So how do you work with archetypes in your work? Well, I've come to think of them a lot as exaggerated representations of yeah. aspects of ourselves. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so yeah. um, two ways, really. I started with the alchemical hypnotherapy work in my early years and then became a practitioner. And it's all about archetypes. And you kind of separate out so many parts of yourself in order to get them into working relationships with one another. Yeah. So 
in relationship to your book, which I loved, um, you separated out the safety squad. Well, all healing work is based on the foundation that all these things that may not be serving us came out of a place of self-protection at some point in our life. <laughs> So now we need to reframe them and re-educate them and find alliances within ourselves to make those things work. Yeah. So I love the safety squad because in alchemical hypnotherapy, I think the judge is the judge. That's the same archetype. I think you called the jailers feels a lot like the saboteur to me, just won't yeah. let him leave. And then what was the third one? The third one is the jellyfish. The jellyfish, the, the jellyfish is kind of the procrastinator yeah. and the distractor. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so they're all the same, but different names. But yeah. how you group them into the safety squad, I thought was brilliant. Oh, thank you. Yeah. How did you come to the realization? This has taken me decades to come to the realization that I needed to have a peaceful relationship with these archetypes inside me rather than trying to kill them. Because I was younger, <laughs> it's been decades since I've done my deepest work. Yeah. And I found alchemical hypnotherapy at a time in my life when I had kind of done the talk therapy thing and understood mm -hmm. things intellectually, mm -hmm. but my life wasn't changing emotionally. My relationship yeah. wasn't improving, my income wasn't happening, I wasn't satisfied. And I knew there were things in my past that I wasn't remembering or that I was reacting to, but I didn't really understand them. So then I went into this emotional level of healing with someone for quite some time in my early 30s. And that's how I ended up making peace with the learning how to make peace with these parts. It's not like you ever stop working with them. <laughs> no, right? Well, <laughs> but it's I different. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Especially the judge. The judge is the probably the most active in my life still i mean i think actually that's one reason why i wrote that book is that my judge is very very active and you know being in a pitched battle with it all the time it never changed anything mine isn't so much anymore i mean it hasn't been for a while i made peace with that part i'm an introvert a serious introvert and so I had to make peace of my inside because what was going on outside of me didn't interest me nearly as much as what was happening inside of me and being with myself. You got to make yourself your best friend. That's yes. really the bottom line. That's what this is all about. If you have that, you can navigate the rest. So um, that started again in my early 30s. Mm. But I think I get away with that in art more because I wasn't born knowing I was an artist or having all these artistic skills. I came to it after I had been a business person, after I had done emotional healing work on myself at uh -huh. significant levels. Mm -hmm. And so my acceptance of life and of my skill set and my ability to see things without judging myself, which is the core. Yeah, that's what that's the ultimate goal of therapy is to gain enough self-esteem and acceptance of yourself so that you can look at things critically and evaluate them without ripping yourself to pieces. Yes. Uh, yes. And, you know, that is true. It's really it's important as an introvert because I'm an extrovert, you know, so a lot of my life is happening outside in front of me. It would be intolerable. <laughs> so, <laughs> you so, can't I can't deflect as much. I can't distract myself. Yeah. So I learned to like being with me and I really do. I can spend inordinate amounts of time on my own. Yeah, that's a huge gift. So Plus, what would you say? Sorry. What, that's okay. I was just going to say working with other people for decades is also a great trainer for acceptance and compassion and, you know, just getting over yourself, basically. <laughs> Amen. Amen, sister. I'm going to hold this up one more time or two more times. So what would you say to somebody who because you have an eclectic set of skills and you've managed to meld them. What would you say to somebody younger who's got this left brain, right brain thing going on and you've made a career and a life out of it? How did you do that? I guess I'm a tireless seeker of knowledge <laughs> that I hope turns into wisdom. Mm. I think I'm adventurous and curious by nature. And so I never really, I get to a place where I'm settled inside with myself, but not with what's going on outside. I, I have to know things. I want to experience them. Yeah. Um, 
and you know, it's a journey too. It's, I learned to juggle these two things. They were like wall of China between them when I started. I was either technical and medical and academic in the office. And then I had this free zone where I could just be creative and wander around. Well, then I put, during COVID has actually pushed me to my latest thing because then it was like, okay, this really compromises the office and what I'm going to be able to do to yeah. make a living doing this. Yeah. And I love art. How do I fuse these things together now? And that's how that started. And so now that it's turning into a business since June, I really have focused on the two and all the aspects. Um, I have a little more rhythm between the wall, you know, because everything in my motive comes from healing and working with people at this level. And I'm not just doing art for me. I am doing it for me, but I'm not just, just doing it for me. I have that inner inspiration and that's how I fuse the things. And I like both. I like being creative. I also like studying and learning and technical stuff is interesting to me. So I get to do both. <laughs> yeah. And you've followed your intuition. I have developed and followed my intuition and always will. Yeah. And always do. And Again, we go back to learning about myself was the best decision I ever made. I can't control anything else that happened to me along the way. I always have a plan. It never looks like what I originally imagined, but you right. learn to surrender to that. Yeah. <laughs> but you have to have one. You have to have one so you can, you can change it, but you've got to have a starting point, just like you have to know what your primary personality is. Because if you know that, then you kind of already have some insight into how you're going to respond and react to things and where your holes are. Mm -hmm. Where do you, you know, what are you missing that's getting, that's keeping you from getting where you're going? Mm -hmm. So that's how I do it. And um, that's, I, I don't have a lot of trouble working at, I, these tools are in me for decades now. I know when some part of me is like not getting what it needs and we sit down and have the peace talks as you call it in your book. Yeah. Um, but you know, there's a lot of circumstances in the external world right now that weren't there before. <laughs> I would say there are a lot more challenges and a lot more change. And if you're not someone who's flexible to change, I think you're going to get run over by a train right now. <laughs> That's a good reason to do it. That would yeah. be a primary reason to undergo exploring yourself in this system or some other yeah yeah well thank you so much i want to show people how they can get a hold of you your art is on the which the architect and health site if you want to go directly to the art okay and then my site anitaalexander.com will show you everything about health and design and bios about me as a practitioner and is that where the quiz is too? The quiz can be downloaded there. The questionnaire okay. is there for free. Good. That's so great. Well, thank you so much. It's It's been a, a big gift to talk to you, a person who has this melding of the creative and the academic slash rational or whatever we would call it. <laughs> and is making those th two things dance together. That's a real gift. Well, thank you so much for having me. I really appreciate it. It's been great to meet you. And yeah. I loved your book. I think it's very helpful. And people should read it and just go through the exercises if they do nothing else. Take my questionnaire and read this book. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. You're welcome. Yes, I agree. <laughs> thank you. <laughs>